This is episode one of the Hanging with Lee podcast. I want to say thank you for, for listening, however you found this. My name's Alex Lee, and I'm going to share part of my story and my intentions behind why I'm doing this. And I want to note first that I actually did record episode one, I want to say about six months ago. I had a little studio that I, I built in a room here at my office, and it didn't really feel like I could get the creative juices flowing and just kind of kind of let it rip. Couldn't get locked in. And uh, I am now sitting on a gymnastics mat. I have a fake wall behind me. I have a poem on the wall and I have a snake plant. I think I'm gonna rotate the plant each episode. And I think just from sitting here the last few minutes after uh, an hour of training out in the sun, will not tell you whether or not I was dressed. Um, I feel like this is the right place to be in the right place to to share some stories and successes and failures that I've had over 35 years of successfully living and not taking a day off. Um, personal life, I'll, I'll share what I see fit. Right now, the exciting things that are going on in my life. Uh, I've been a husband for almost three years. My wife, Kirsten, is 24 weeks pregnant, so I guess five or six months now. I know math, but I know that weeks, anyway. Um, and we're, you know, over the moon, excited, and just ready for, uh, you know, ready for these next three, four months to, to go by and for us to have a healthy baby. That, that's number one priority in my life right now. And, uh, you know, continuing to, to build that relationship with, with my wife and for us to accept and welcome a, a happy, healthy kid into the world. So that's number one. A few months ago when I <laughs> recorded the first first episode, that was in the back of my mind, but we hadn't told anybody because we had only known for about two weeks. And, uh, you know, I, I let maybe some of the pressure of the judgment of the Internet and the, uh, you know, just feeling a little, you know, ready, but also kind of in, in disbelief that we were about to have a kid and didn't feel like I could just let it rip and, and uh, you know, really share in an authentic way what I wanted to, to share and get across as far as the points that I was, I was trying to make. And when I listened back, I sounded tired, I sounded bored, and, and maybe I was, maybe I, I just wasn't ready yet, but I feel ready now. Um, there's, not, there's not many things inside me that are reserved about this at this point. Um, you know, we only get one shot at, at all this. And this is just where I'm at now, and this is what I wanna share. So, um, you know, decided sitting cross-legged on the floor was a better move. And uh, this just feels more like me. So some stories that I'll, I'll share and some things that I'll go through as far as where I am right now. I live in Sarasota, Florida. I own a chiropractic practice in a gym. Um, we're about three minutes from the, the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport on Highway 41. And uh, I have an office manager and a team of, of people that work with me. Um, I love what I do. It doesn't feel like work. Leading up to this, obviously I went to, to chiropractic college is where I met my wife. Um, she also practices. And before that, probably for the last 11 years since the first time I stepped foot into a chiropractic office, I have been really, really interested and continually observing and experiencing and trialing and, and, uh, and just trying to, to build my health in as many natural ways as possible and to, to share the successes and the failures with people that, that I work with. So my intention with this podcast is to, to do just that. In conjunction with the podcast, I have a YouTube channel that I started posting videos on maybe eight years ago, and it hasn't been very consistent. I, I feel that the, the best way that I can convey certain messages is through, through visuals and through demonstrating. Um, so I have some videos that are going to be a little bit longer form of me either demonstrating certain things that I do for health practices or things that I've found useful and, and just need more than you know 30 or 60 seconds to, to explain. Um, on top of that, uh, one thing that um, creating right now, and I guess I have created, um, are a couple online communities. One is for everyone who's looking to improve their health, and then another one is specifically for baseball players and athletes. Um, part of my story was I, I played baseball. Um, through high school, through college, I played overseas for four seasons when I got done. Um, had a great run and, and really 
uh, got to see a lot of the world, got to meet a lot of great people. Also had a, a phase in my life where I over identified with an activity that I did, which was playing baseball and something that I loved. And it, it, it turned into something that I didn't love anymore. And without going too far into details of right now, what I'm seeing, there's, there's a trend towards that happening uh, in a, a really, I'd say, negative way, um, which I'll get into. So uh, trends in the youth and, and amateur and even professional levels, but I'll, I'll get to that um, as we keep going here. So got nothing but time. And uh, other things that I, I want to share, I have a list of a few things here. Um, I'd say definitely the most urgent thing right now is, you know, expecting to enter fatherhood in three or four months. And, you know, some of the feelings that have, have come up, um, you know, the excitement, obviously, and also, you know, the, the little voice that, that starts chattering that, um, you know, I'm inadequate, that, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't built enough to provide for my family. Um, you know, little things that, you know, the voice can continually, uh, you know, you can have swing thoughts that go in a certain direction that, that um, you know, I've talked to other fathers that have been parents for a long time and, and you know, they said, you know, it's natural feelings. Um, and it's something that I've been navigating lately. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I have a really good support group and I've been, I've been working through that. And uh, yeah, that, that's, been, that's been a big thing that's been coming up. Um, I realized that, you know, in about three or four months when you know, baby arrives, we're going to uh, gonna have to plan out time to, to train, to, to record podcasts, to record videos that maybe I could have otherwise just woke up on a Saturday morning and done 12 hours straight. So, um, you know, realize that there's things that are gonna change and it's all, it's all for the better. It's all what I feel my, my great purpose is, has always been. Um, and I spent a lot of time trying to get to this point to, to build a, a healthy, loving, happy relationship. And um, I have that and it's continually growing. And, you know, I had to, I had to change a lot of things about myself and learn a lot of things and break a lot of habits that weren't necessarily constructive and uh, try to replace them. And then, you know, also look at times where uh, some old patterns and some old habits kind of reemerge and, and start to wonder, hey, why? Why is this happening? Um, I'm sure something in there resonated with, with you if you're a father. Um, I feel like certain topics will hit with, with parents um, or parents-to-be. I feel like a lot of topics that we'll talk about will resonate with everybody who wants to build their health naturally, but um, athletes, just a broad scope, working with athletes, um, adult athletes, uh, husbands. Um, I'll share stories of you know when I was single in my, my teens and my 20s and when I was trying to you know, um, turn into who I am now. I'm not saying I'm a perfect, complete version of anything, um, but I've done a lot of work and uh, I feel like, you know, who I am now compared to where I was five years ago or 10 years ago, I'm, I'm proud of, you know, of, uh, of where I am. I've cut out a lot of things in my life that I felt were, you know, destructive and not, you know, adding to my, my health, my, um, my expression of who I felt like I've always been on the inside. Uh, I feel like I've stripped away a lot of layers and I feel like I've done a lot of addition through subtraction. And, uh, you know, I, I think one thing that'll, that'll hit is, you know, working with some of the, the men who may feel lost in their teens and their twenties. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, that's more on the personal side, on the business side. There's a lot of topics that will, uh, you know, uh, go into chiropractic training, uh, training with uh, what we call ISOs or, or different uh, isometric holds, and then the progression through building a foundation for, for long-term physical health. Uh, on top of that, the, the, the mental and the spiritual and, and emotional and psychological side that comes along with um, what I feel every every training session and every session that somebody partakes in to uh, improve their physical health and expression and output, what that should consist of. Um, so, you know, building health naturally, the expression of good health. I have a list right here that I'm kind of looking at. Um, chiropractic in general, the, the roots of the profession, the, the original philosophy of, 
of looking at health through a nervous system standpoint and looking at it through uh, the expression of intelligence through a living being and, and how that parlays into everything else that I do. Um, talk about NuFit, uh, the newbie, uh, so using direct current electricity to improve health in various ways. Uh, also just athletic expression in general, life expression in general. Um, and then something that I've been kind of toying with lately, I've seen it with a lot of different, uh, I guess, sources that I've looked at for health, whether it be individuals or, or groups, but uh, I, I've, I don't really have a name for it yet. I should market it in some way. I, I've kind of just called it the five pillars of health, um, but the five pillars would be uh, body movement, so training and exercise in whatever form that looks like, and then just daily practices and movement, uh, diet or nourishment, so taking food in, getting rid of food that you don't need or waste that you don't need, uh, sleep, so rest, recovery, quiet time, uh, sunlight and natural light, so getting outside. And the last one would be the biggest uh, of all of the pillars, which would be the, the intangibles, so the things that are more difficult to measure. So belief, purpose, um, relationships, the, uh, the bigger things that can't necessarily be reduced to, hey, this is a, a training plan that I'm going to do on a sheet of paper. Hey, this is my food log of what I ate. Um, some of which of those things I believe are necessary. And uh, yeah, the intangibles are, are really where the juice is at. Um, something that I've, I've believed and really, uh, you know, dove down pretty deep for the last four years has been uh, the concept of something that we'll talk about called stick man, which is uh, essentially how whatever enters our subconscious mind expresses, expresses as truth um, outward into our environment and, and from our bodies. Um, a different way to say that would be thoughts become things. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, in the health space that have recently become more interested in whether you call it the metaphysical or simply the, the idea that our emotional state can express outwardly through our body and affect our health. And that's something that, uh, you know, I don't need to believe in it, it's just true and uh, something that I'll, I'll share a lot more on. Um, you know, I feel like with, with teasing each of these subjects, uh, I wanna just kinda go on rambles for all of them, but um, I digress. Uh, yeah, and, and essentially the, the big, the, uh, the overarching thing is just the, the spirit of human adaptability and how we can overcome uh, and adapt and improvise uh, in so many different situations. And when we, when we allow ourselves to you know, align from a purpose and a belief standpoint, we can overcome and adapt and, and get through and not only get through, but improve through um, some incredible situations. And uh, I wanna share stories that um, I've personally been through that you know, may or may not be incredible, but I, I do think that life is a miracle and that normal physiology is a miracle. And, you know, every, every day that we wake up and every chance that we get to, uh, to, uh, to go through this life is a miracle. And with that, um, I'll share some stories of, of people that, that I've worked with personally, um, stories that I also believe are just impactful and need to be shared. Uh, the first season I, I plan to do mostly solo, but I'll probably just sprinkle some other people in. I feel like there's not too many rules. Uh, I get to kind of make them as I go. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I also just kind of want to share as well that um, over the last, I'd say, 12 years of my life, I've, I've gone into different business ventures in uh, the past you know, two or three since opening the practice here. Um, I guess I, I should go into that. Uh, the practice I've, I've opened is called Circadian Chiropractic and Sport. I mentioned we're in Sarasota, Florida. Um, you know, one thing that has been a trend that I've seen in my own business pursuits over, you know, like I said, 12 years has been kind of perfectionism that's kind of held me back. And I feel like that's a pretty common thing with anyone who, who starts a business. I, I don't want to use the word entrepreneur. I just, I, that word is, that word is similar to, I'd say like creating content. I'd say that those two terms are, are real big buzzwords that if you want to quickly see me uh, like, <laughs> like physically, uh, revolt against a certain term, uh, use either of those in my presence. But um, yeah, perfectionism and, and I guess 
the idea of, I heard this somewhere, I think it's called minimal vi minimum viable product. So just being able to put something out that uh, rather than creating this entire course and business plan and, and all these different things that you don't know how they'll be received um, and just putting the smallest thing out there and then letting it grow from there. Uh, I've, I've just kind of had paralysis by analysis and, and that includes the uh, first two episodes of, of the Hanging with Lee podcast that I recorded a while ago. Um, I, I think I'm kind of at a point where I, I have less reservation and less feeling of being judged. I, I could, I just care less and less uh, as I start to see a bigger picture of what's important and what matters. And I think the most important thing is being able to reach the people that this needs to, to reach, uh, whatever stage of life that's in. Um, for some reason, even though I'm, I'm 35, there's, you know, teenagers and kids in college in their young 20s that think I'm not absolutely dripping with dad energy and actually listen to me sometimes. So that's cool. Uh, I do. Uh, I've, I've learned some of their new slang and languages and languaging rather, um, which I know just even me saying that right there makes me sound like I'm a dad and I'm out of touch. But uh, I feel like I can still get through to some of them, which is cool. So if you're one of those people and you're listening to this and you're cringing, uh, I am too. So you're not alone. Um, I guess the, the other trend that I've had through, through business and, and just through my entrepreneurial journey um, <clears throat> has been avoidance. So just not uh, tackling some of the things head on that I've needed to. And it's been, you know, periods of, of that where, you know, that hasn't happened for months or years and then certain periods where it has. Uh, I can relate it to maybe my athletic career. Uh, as you start to move up and up levels of, you know, players that, you know, make it to the next level and players that don't, you can start to see some trends and those carry over into life. And, and I'd say the biggest trend is that um, I'm relating this to my, my personal journey and my, through my, uh, my mental health, we'll call it that. Um, I've been able to find that you know, I used to have bad days that would last months or years, or I, I feel like I had a whole decade that I kind of threw away. Not threw away, you, you, you learn things throughout that, but um, you know, where, where the, uh, some of the negative swing thoughts didn't get checked, and now they have. Uh, I feel like when I do have those same thoughts, and you know, I'm, I'm very human, I do feel uh, the same things that I used to feel when I feel like things were more negative for a longer amount of time. I still feel all of that. I'm just able to now cut it down to a shorter amount of time. And if we want to talk, you know, go back to baseball for a minute, you know, the great, the great players that are, you know, the uh, elite of the elite, I'm going to use the word elite only because there's only a few of them. Um, they can cut their slumps down to, you know, several games or a week or make an adjustment even within, you know, an at bat or a game. And, you know, for players that may have the same amount of natural ability and talent, um, that may not necessarily have the, the mental skills and the emotional uh, ability to do that, they can't. And they let something small that they could think through through mental gymnastics and actually make an adjustment and make a change, and, and they can't. And that might take them a month. It might take them a season. It may, it may literally derail their entire, uh, entire career. And if their identity is tied up into that, then you know, things can go south pretty quick. So the whole reason I say that is, is I've been able to, uh, you know, figure out, you know, my, my emotions aren't me. You know, I may have a day where I feel sad or a day where I feel anxious. That doesn't mean I have anxiety. That doesn't mean I have depression. And I don't want to use those words lightly or kind of poo-poo that. Um, I'm just able to realize that I'm not that. It's a feeling. It's, it's a moment in time. I, I may be a person that uh, has the propensity to feel some of those emotions, and I can also look at it objectively and say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll even say it out loud, not useful. Like if I'm feeling a certain way, if, if something's going through my head, a certain thought, just say it out loud, not useful. That, that's, that's not helping me. And where I've been able to uh, take that is now that I've been able to do it for a longer amount of time, I'm able to see people who may be going through that same thing and offer a word of advice, check them in a, a, a healthy way, a tactful way to say, hey, have you considered that maybe, you know, 
it may be an emotion that you're feeling, but that's not who you are. And, you know, we all have the capacity to change and we all have the capacity to heal. We all have that innately within us. And one thing that I've really come to, to love about myself is that I can feel all these different things throughout the course of a day, throughout the course of a week. And I can feel high and I can feel low. And I can also check myself and, and bring myself back to, you know, a more even keel. I apologize if my voice puts some of you to sleep. Maybe listen to me at night. Uh, I feel like uh, if you want to pop this on while you're driving and listen, uh, the podcast will be more audio, even though there is a video component on, on YouTube that I'll upload. Um, the longer form videos, some of the YouTube videos that are going to be more instructional, I'd recommend you can listen to them, but they'll have a visual component for sure. I hope that a lot of people get a lot out of this. I will have guests. If you want to be a guest, awesome. If you want to contribute to the first season, uh, I'm going to try to rotate that plant every episode. So if you've got something cool that you want me to put here instead, uh, I'll do that. Um, I'm not going to read the poem. I get choked up every time I read it. I don't want to cry on camera. But if you would like to read it, you can either zoom in or I can snap a picture. Um, at this point, I'm just kind of rambling. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with how episode one of the Hanging with Lee podcast played out. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that I needed to talk about there. No, that, that's, that's pretty much everything. I don't have an upsell. Uh, I don't have a course created that's uh, $15 billion. So uh, if you've got any questions, if you want to... If you want anything answered on here, I'll give it my best. I'm not a guru. Um, I'm, a, I'm a man. Um, I'm going to be a dad soon, and I'm stoked about that, and that's the number one thing. And uh, I'm just I'm glad that, that I, uh, you know, big W getting to, to put this out. Felt pretty locked in. I, I felt grounded. And uh, to, oh, to circle back to what I was saying a second ago about uh, the ups and downs, uh, I feel like you know, I'm able to look objectively and not and, and say, hey, you know, this emotion isn't me. And then also able to, to go back to what these five pillars of health would be and say, what is it that I'm doing in here? Uh, or what is it that I'm maybe not doing in here that, that could be leading to some of these tendencies that I'm having right now? Um, so that's something that we'll, we'll get into as we keep going. Um, I also recommend now that you've, you've listened to this, hopefully you figured it out by now, my cadence at which I speak isn't remarkably fast. So I'm pretty good if you listen to me at 1.2 speed or if you listen to me at 1.5 speed, no. Um, if you speed this up a little bit, it may be a little bit better for both of us. Um, that's all I got. Thanks, guys.